For the best prices and service on Pokemon TCG singles and products, check out ccgcastle.com and use promo code EVOLUTIONARIES-5 for 5% off your next order. What's up, Pokemon fans? I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, and today I'm going to be profiling the deck that I took to the 2017 Fort Wayne Regional Championships. Now, as you guys know, Fort Wayne was an expanded event, so that means pretty much everything goes at this point. Uh, anything goes at this point, I should say. From black and white on, all the way up through Burning Shadows, we are talking about a lot, a lot of sets being legal. Uh, somewhere around the range of, I think, 25 or 26 sets, including subsets or something like that. Might even be more, might even be closer to 30. Uh, that's just rough numbers off the top of my head. But uh, 24, 26, 27, 28, I think it was actually closer to 30, 29 or 30 sets. But um, I chose at the very last moment, actually, we're talking like 12.30 a.m. Uh, when the event starts, when, you know, when registration starts at 8 a.m. the next morning, uh, I decided to go with Aerodactyl. Now, I was very set on Trevenant going all the way up to the event until I saw all of the Dark Cry and all of the other Trevenant being played. And I thought to myself, I really don't want to sit here and play nothing but auto losses and mirror matches all day long. And it's a good thing I didn't because I ended up facing four Darkrai decks and two Trevenant decks out of nine rounds. That's six out of nine rounds of just total misery had I chose to play Trevenant. Not to mention Trevenant seemed to really just brick on me over and over again. I'd end up with hands that I couldn't do anything with. So I decided to listen to the advice of my friend Hunter and I said, man, you're crazy, but all right, you know what? This is at least going to be more fun than playing Trevenant in this format. So again, this was my very, very first expanded event. So Aerodactyl was the choice that I went with. It's got some really interesting tweak, uh, twists and turns to it. Uh, twist is actually a very interesting pun, as you guys will find out here in just a minute. But um, it's definitely not a deck that you can just pick up and play. It's something that you have to be a really good at, at least seeing your hands and knowing what you can do with them prior to actually doing something with it. So it's very, very intensive as far as how you have to strategize and think. Um, but at the same time, you must be quick because this deck does actually play pretty slowly. And if you don't win game one, chances are you're going to tie or lose. And that's actually what happened to me a lot this weekend. And it was a very good learning experience for me as a player moving forward playing this particular deck. So shout out to Hunter for uh, building the deck and uh, basically making me run it at the same time. So let's take a look at the deck to see exactly how it works and what you can do with it. Now, I will tell you that there is only one true basic Pokemon in this deck. Only one. Everything else is a pseudo starter or you just straight up cannot start with it. So it allows you to build your own hand, so to speak. But before we get into much into that, I'm going to show you guys the Pokemon lineup. So first and foremost, we have four copies of Talonflame with the Gale Wings ability. So what the Gale Wings ability says is if this Pokemon is in your hand, when you're setting up to play, you may put it face down as your active Pokemon. So, Talonflame is really interesting because you can start it as a basic Pokemon, and it's got a very good attack in Aeroblitz. 40 damage, and search your deck for up to two cards, put them into your hand, and shuffle your deck afterwards. So you can attack and search things out at the same time. Also, another thing about Talonflame is, is that even though the Gale Wings ability says that you can put it down, you don't have to put it down. So essentially what you're doing is creating your own starting hand, especially if you go first. If you go first, you can build your own hand based upon what you get. You can choose to mulligan, or you can choose to not mulligan and actually go with what you have in your hand. So uh, a lot of times, you look at it and you go, okay, I've got Talonflame, and I've got this, 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 and this but I don't know if I like it or not, so I'm just gonna mulligan. You show your opponent it, and you mulligan it away and start over. Or you start with Talonflame and a hand that you do like, and you go, okay, this is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and start, and your opponent can take however many mulligans that you give them. I will say, this deck gives you a lot of mulligans. I'm talking like in the range of 70 to 100 mulligans per tournament. Nine rounds, I gave up so many mulligans, it's not even funny. A lot of them were done purposely, and I'll explain to you where that came into play more than anything. But Talonflame is a really good card in this deck. Actually, it's the only reason why the deck works in the first place, but there you go. All right, enough about that. We also have four copies of Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is a restored Pokemon, meaning that it's not a basic Pokemon. You can only get it out in a few different ways. 
Uh, the most common way is through using the old amber Aerodactyl card, which tells you to search the bottom seven cards of your deck. If you find an Aerodactyl there, you put it on the bench. There's also a stadium that allows you to flip a coin. If you have it in your hand, it lands on heads, you can put it on the bench. But Aerodactyl is a really good Pokemon. 120 HP, it's a little on the low side, but it's attack. Jet Draft, 120 damage for a DCE, and you discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Now, special energy is very, very prevalent across the board. So discarding a double colorless energy, uh, a rainbow energy, a blend energy, anything like that, mystery energy, whatever. Uh, you can, strong energy, there's that too. There's tons of stuff you could blow away with this thing and hit for 120 damage. Not to mention, they're pretty recyclable because if you put them back into your deck, you can just use old amber again, over and over again until you get this thing back out again. It only gives up one prize. That's another thing about this deck is that almost every card is a one prize attacker. So you're also taking a lot of prize trades in your favor as well. Not to mention Jet Draft, 120 actually hits for a pretty good number because of the choice band you're talking 150 kukui you got 170 and there's also hypnotoxic laser which hits for 180 you can one hit knock out uh, a dark rye or something of that same similarity so aerodactyl really cool pokemon uh for the dark rye matchup and also against strangely enough mega manectric that i did happen to face we have Gallade. Gallade is a 150 hp stage 2 pokemon now, we do not play Ralts, we do not play Curlia, we use Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick to get this out. Now, let's take a look at Gallade itself first. It's got a really great ability and a really great attack. Premonition is the ability. It says, uh, once during your turn before you attack, you may look at the top five cards of the deck and put them back on top in any way that you want, in any order. Then Sensitive Blade for a double color synergy does 60, and if you played a supporter card from your hand during this turn, that attack does 70 more damage. So you're hitting for 130 if you play a supporter, 160 with a choice fan, 180 with a Kukui. Big, big numbers for this Gallade, and it also one-shots Darkrai if you played a supporter for the turn, or if you didn't and you have a choice band attached to it. You're one-shotting Darkrai EX and GX Pokemon. So um, that's the thing. If you play against Darkrai and you get out one or two Gallades, usually the match swings in your favor. The only downside is, of course, giving up the cards to make this happen. So when I say that you want to mulligan sometimes with Talonflame in hand, it's because you want to be able to play Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. We'll get into that a little bit more, but for now, just keep that in mind. Now, the one basic Pokemon that we play in this deck, and it is the only reason why we play it, uh, for Trevenant. This card right here, Latias EX. A very overlooked card, but in this format, pretty interesting. Its ability is Bright Down. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon with abilities. So essentially, here's what you do. You sit down across from your opponent, you find out what kind of matches they played, so on and so forth. You get a read for what they've won against, what they've lost against, if they're willing to tell you. If not, well then, you know, you kind of have to guess whatever the case is um, and just go with it. But um, there was a match where I had a pretty good idea that he was playing Trevenant. So I started with Latias and nothing else. I mulliganed over and over and over and over and over again till Latias. Didn't realize what I was doing, so he took the mulligan cards. He started to set up and then said, what does that card do? Looked at it and said, well, every one of my Pokemon in Trevenant, in the Trevenant decks, have abilities. Necrozma has an ability. Tapu Lele has an ability. Trevenant has an ability. And when you break Evolve, you retain the abilities. So unless you play something like Wobbuffet or a 1-1 Garb or a Mewtwo, or if you play Hex Maniac, there's nothing you can do to get around this. 95% of the builds of Trevenant break do not have a way to get around Latias. So what you do, you start, you let them go first. Let them draw, pass. Draw, pass. Draw, pass, draw, pass, draw, pass, draw, pass, draw, pass, draw, pass. It's a really boring way to play, and I gotta tell you, I felt really bad doing it, but it is the best way for this deck to beat Trevenant. Just sit behind Latias and deck them out. Game two, they say, all right, you go first. So, all right, I'll go first. I draw my card, I scoop because I'm gonna, lo I'm gonna lose the card drawing exchange because I am drawing first. So I will actually end up drawing my last card before my opponent will. We go to game three, I tell him to go first. Obviously it's pretty straightforward what's gonna happen. Draw a pass, draw a pass, draw a pass. They're going to eventually deck out. Even with ends and VS Seekers in enough time, three games got to be played, technically speaking, and I won just because I started Latias and did nothing else in the game. Again, it's a lot like a Waylord kind of way of winning, but this is something that my buddy Hunter came up with, and it's dirty, it's definitely not fun to do against somebody, 
but it works. So Trevenant is an auto win for that sake if you can manage to predict them. I had another Trevenant matchup that I did not predict and uh, they, I flipped over Talonflame, they flipped over Tapu Lele. When they did that, uh, I said, okay, I've got an Arrow Blitz for Latias. That's what I ended up trying to do. And they went first, attached a Mystery and a Bursting Balloon and passed to me. I went ahead and attached, went ahead and Arrow Blitzed for 40, took the 60 damage and got Latias in my hand. Then they got another energy in hand, a double colorless as a matter of fact, exactly what they needed to attach to Lele and hit me for 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 when I already had 60 on me. So I took that one. Uh, <laughs> that was a donk on my Talon Flame before I even got to put Latias down. So next game, I started Latias and they went first and they realized what I was doing, scooped to me. So we go to game three. I go first, I know that I'm not gonna be able to win this game, so I try to trick as best as I can my opponent into not doing anything. They started Shaman, I started Latias, and I let my deck go basically as down as far as I could, and then I started to try to get an Aerodactyl set up. I had a Floatstone to attach to Latias, I had DCE in hand, and I had a whole bunch of Old Amber Aerodactyls and a whole bunch of Fossil Excavation Kits. So I was like, all right, I can do this. I whiffed every single one of them to get an Aerodactyl out of my deck and ended up, my opponent, after that turn, decided, well, the only way we're going to do this is to start benching stuff. And we went to time. I needed one prize. They actually knocked off my Floatstone with a Zerosic. I couldn't do anything because I needed to be able to retreat and also attack. And it's got a one retreat cost. I can't get away without the Floatstone. So I ended up tying that match but Latias was a big deal, needless to say. All right, that's a lot of information. This is a very complicated deck, so I'm sorry, but you gotta stick with me on it. The supporter lineup is not going to make any sense to any of you, but I promise you, I never once felt starved for a supporter or a way to draw. Keep that in mind. I did not ever find myself starved for cards. All right, we play one Professor Sycamore. Draw seven cards, discard your hand, draw seven cards. We play one N. Each player shuffles his or her hand in the discard pile, or discard pile, into the deck, sorry. Each player shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck. And then each player draws a card for each of the his or her remaining prize cards. One of those each. One Professor Kukui. Draw two cards during this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage. We play one copy of Guzma. Switch your opponent's benched Pokemon with their active Pokemon. If you do, switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. And finally, we play two copies of Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. This is it. This is our entire supporter line. Uh, essentially what you want to do, now that we have Maxi's in our hand here, is you start with a bunch of stuff and you have a Talonflame and you got something else. Like you got five other cards, whatever the case may be. Your goal is to start with this and get it to where you have nothing but a Maxi in your hand or a VS Seeker in your hand with a Battle Compressor to compress this away, whatever the case is. You need to get down to this card being your last card because Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick states, you can only play this card when it is the last card in your hand. Put a fighting Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench and draw five cards. Here's the fighting Pokemon. So you need to find a way to get this in the discard pile this be the last card in your hand, or at least a VS Secret to get this. And, well, the rest of the stuff, you have to burn it. You have to work through it somehow. It's very complicated, and it's not something that a, uh, a an amateur player or a new player can pick up and actually do successfully more times than not. Even I managed to fail a couple of times on the Maxis, but a lot of it was due to top decks not going in my favor. So. Maxi's Gallade is how that works. You can, your, draw, your draw power comes basically from these five cards right here, and you have VS Seekers to recycle them, but the deck just burns through things so fast that it's not even an issue. So uh, I'll show you guys the rest of the deck so you get a bit more of an understanding. As I said, there are four copies of VS Seekers, so this is our way to get back all of our supporters. Again, I never found myself supporter starved because this is essentially four extra supporters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine ways to get a supporter card. It doesn't sound so bad when you put it that way. After that, we have four copies of Trainer's Mail. Look at the top four cards of your deck, reveal a trainer card you find there, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your uh, the other cards back into your deck. Now, this is something where you can grab something like a Battle Compressor and use it to get your hand size down, or if you need to burn a card, you don't have to reveal whether or not you have a trainer card in your hand. You can actually just fail it 
And that'll leave you with, say it'll leave you with a Maxi in your hand or a VS Seeker for Maxi in your hand. Um, whatever you have to do to make Maxi possible. But um, that's how you use Trainer's Mail to your effect. Also, another way to burn through cards, Acro Bike. Look at the top two cards of your deck, put one in your hand, discard the other. So you're gonna put something into your hand that you can burn through or something that you need and just throw the other one in the discard pile. So there's four copies of that. Also, we have four copies of Battle Compressor. So essentially your first Battle Compressor is gonna look something like this. You're gonna wanna throw out as many Gallade as you possibly can. If you have a VS Seeker in your hand, you wanna toss out a Maxi as well. So it'll be one Maxi, two Gallade. Or if you have a Maxi in your hand, you wanna throw out one or two Gallade and then a Talon Flame. Your next Battle Compressor, Throw out Talon Flames, get them out of here. You can't use them anymore. So throw out all your extra Talon Flames and thin out your deck as much as you can with useless stuff. That way, your Aerodactyls, your Old Amber Aerodactyls hit easier and you're also not drawing into dead stuff all the time. That's why Battle Compressor is such a good card. It allows you to really just thin out your deck and get you into the resources that you need, that you want to use to make your deck work. And in matches where Latias is no good, you can burn him out too, or her out too, whatever. <laughs> All right, next up here we have four copies of Old Amber Aerodactyl. So, Old Amber Aerodactyl says, Look at the bottom seven cards of your deck. You may reveal an Aerodactyl you find there and put it onto your bench. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So you're going to look at the bottom seven, and you're going to see if you can find yourself an Aerodactyl. There's really no way to guarantee that. There's really no way to even uh, up your chances of doing so without playing Battle Compressor. That's why we compress away as many Talon Flames as we can. We compress away our Gallades and our Maxis as early as we can. If we're going to use a third Compressor, we can even get rid of more stuff that we don't need. Uh, if, um, like I said, if Latias isn't needed, you compress that away. Um, any other cards as well, you can also just get rid of to make space so that Old Amber Aerodactyl hits. Now, we only have four of these, so we got to be careful with them, right? Not exactly. Uh, we also play three copies of Fossil Excavation Kit. Fossil Excavation Kit says put two in any combination of Helix Fossil Ammonite, Dome Fossil Kabuto, or Old Amber Aerodactyl from your discard pile into your hand. So that makes these four Old Amber Aerodactyl worth much, much more. You can play these four, then you can get two of them back to play six, eight, ten. You can play this ten times. 10 Old Amber Aerodactyls you can play, looking at the bottom seven of your cards, or of your deck, just to see if you can find an Aerodactyl to put yourself down on the bench and move on from there. So that's why the consistency of this deck isn't really a very much of an issue. The only way that this deck struggles if it, is if it gets hit very quickly and there's just not that much going on for it. You know, if you whiff a lot of Aerodactyls, it does hurt. But your chances are much, much less because of this. We also play three copies of Ultra Ball because this is a good way to get your hand size down. 99.9 times uh, you're going to play Ultra Ball and fail it because again, there's only one basic Pokemon in the deck that you can get out with an Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is good for a few things. It's good for thinning out your deck. It's good for getting rid of Aerodac or I'm sorry, uh, Gallades in your hand. It's also good for getting rid of Aer uh, Talon Flames. I keep saying Aerodactyl. I don't even know why I'm saying Aerodactyl. It's also good for getting rid of Talon Flames in your hand as well. So three copies of Ultra Ball for that reason. Chances are you're just gonna look through your deck, check your resources, make sure that what you need is in there and say, fail. You fail it every time. Your deck is private knowledge. You have the right to fail it as many times as you wish. So that's that. Another thing that makes this deck work really well, it also increases our count of Old Amber Aerodactyl. It also increases our count of supporters. And it also brings back potential Pokemon even Four copies of Puzzle of Time. If you play one of these cards, you look at the top three cards of your deck, put them back in any order, which is good. It's like a mini premonition. You can do this and then Acro Bike. And that pretty much guarantees you whatever those three cards that you want, you can make sure that it's there. And you can get rid of whatever else you can afford to get rid of. So essentially, it creates an Acro Bike for three in a situation where you have to play the Puzzle of Time. If you only have one in your hand and you need to get your hand size down to be able to maxi, well, that's what you have to do whether you like it or not. If you have two of them, you put two of them into your discard, or play, if you play two cards, you can take two cards from your discard pile, put them into your hand. So you can recycle any and every card in this deck over again, at least uh, a minimum of four, or a maximum of four times with Puzzle of Time. You can get four total cards with four Puzzle of Time. Um, it's pretty much how you play the game, how you need to get things. You may need another supporter. You may need another old amber. You may need another, uh, you shouldn't need another battle compressor by the time you use puzzles. But if you do, you do. You can get acrobikes, trainers, mails, anything in this deck 
you can bring them back. Aerodactyls get knocked out, bring them back. It's just a really good card in the deck. We play one copy of Floatstone, and this is exclusively for two Pokemon. These two right here. I would much rather put the Floatstone on the Latias or burn it out than put it on the Gallade because I would much rather use a different tool on this one. And that tool card is Choice Band. Choice Band, you can do 30 more damage to all Pokemon EX or GX uh, with this card. So this allows you to hit for much better numbers. We're talking 160 damage this way. There's 170 if you need it. You got 180 with Kukui, 190 with Kukui and the laser. It just hits for really good numbers. So one copy of Choice Band. We also have, like I said, the one copy of Hypnotoxic Laser. Uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Flip a coin of heads, they're also asleep. So it also is a good stall tactic. If you have nothing else to do and you're afraid of getting uh, knocked out next turn and you have nothing else to back it up with, you can always try to go for the sleep flip and just pray that it works. It's a lot like the Froakie Bubble situation. We have one copy of Field Blower. We need to use it wisely, of course. Choose up to two of any combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards in play, yours or your opponent's, and discard them. Uh, it can come in clutch. It can get rid of Fighting Fury Belts off of Darkrai, so you can one-shot them with Gallade. Um, there's some other situations, too, that might work, like Bursting Balloon, for instance, if you happen to run across something that you're not item-locked, other than Trevenant, maybe like Greninja, something like that. If they play them, you can get rid of them with Field Blower. We also have one copy of Target Whistle. Target Whistle, put a basic Pokemon from your opponent's discard pile onto his or her bench. You can put something useless there, or even something that might be two prizes, like a Shaman, for instance, and you can knock them out with Aerodactyls. Easy. Knock out a Shaman with Aerodactyl, play Target Whistle the next turn, bring it back on the bench, Guzma it up. This has free retreat. This has free retreat. You can switch around pretty freely. That's why Guzma doesn't even hurt you. And then you can just knock out that same Shaman again for four prizes in two turns. It's pretty nice. We have one copy of Rescue Stretcher. Choose one. You can put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile back into your deck. Again, this is what you're going to want to do to recycle your Aerodactyls as much as possible. Um, you obviously don't want Gallade to come out of the discard pile if it gets knocked out. You want to maxi again. Um, other than that, really, that's your only reason for using it. It's for Aerodactyls to get one back into your hand to Twist Mountain it, which you'll see in a minute, uh, or to put them back in the deck to use Old Amber over again. We have one copy of Special Charge because in this format there are a lot of ways to get rid of Special Energy and we only play four of them. So we want to shuffle two, I almost said three, two Special Energy cards from your discard pile back into your deck. This card has saved me, I can't even tell you how many times. We do have an Ace spec in the deck and that is going to be Computer Search, discard two cards from your hand and you search your deck for a card, put it into your hand. You don't have to show it or anything, automatic, just discard two, put whatever card you want into your hand. I'm actually going to put this over here with this float stone because I am running out of room. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stack some of this stuff up a little bit just to make the room. I think I'm going to do one more. There we go. All right, this is the stadium card. One copy of Twist Mountain. Once during your turn, be, uh, one during, once during each player's turn, that player may flip a coin if heads the player puts a restored Pokemon from his or her hand onto his or her bench. So Twist Mountain says, all right, you have an Aerodactyl in your hand. Obviously, you can't Old Amber for it. So why don't we just try, flip a coin. If it lands on heads, take it out of your hand, put it onto your bench. Pretty simple. This actually saved me quite a few times as well, and it helped me make uh, Maxi even more possible. I computer searched for Twist Mountain. I had an Aerodactyl in my hand I couldn't do anything with. I played down Battle Compressor and one other card, I think, and I was able to flip, put it down. All I had left in my hand was a Maxi. Already had Gallade in the discard pile. So it helps with that too. It just makes the maxi engine so much stronger because it gives you a way to burn out this Aerodactyl without throwing it away with an Ultra Ball or something like that. Last but not least, four copies of Double Colorless Energy. The entire deck runs off of DCEs. It burns through the deck so fast that you don't even realize that you uh, that you're, you you never find yourself starved for energy. That's the main point here. Uh, the deck just has so many discardable things. Trainer's Mail burns through the deck. Acrobike burns through the deck. Battle Compressor really burns through the deck. Old Ambers go quickly. Fossil Excavations go quickly. Ultra Balls go quickly. Puzzles go quickly. Uh, Computer Search discards too anyway. And all these other one-offs, they just go so fast that you don't even realize how quickly you're burning through your deck. Most of the time, you're only left with maybe in or between 5 and 10 cards left in your deck by the end of a match, even if it does go quickly. So, 
that is how this deck works. It's very complicated. It is definitely not the easiest deck to run. I don't recommend it for newer players. It is a ton of fun if you know what you're doing with it. That I cannot deny. This was the right choice for me over Trevenant. Now, if I had a better look at the meta prior to the tournament, and if I understood Expanded just a little bit better going into it, I still would not have played this deck. It was a ton of fun, but I would not have played it because it equals into a lot of draws because you have to play things very quickly. You need to know what you're doing before you actually even do it. You need to predict yourself, basically. You need to be able to look at your hand and go, I can do this, 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 and this, and be done with it. Just do it. If you take any time, you will find yourself in a tie situation very quickly. Um, either you need to game, win game one, or you need to go through game one as quickly as you can, figure out your point when you can't win anymore, and just scoop. That is what I cannot stress enough to newer players. If you find yourself in an unwinnable game, scoop as quickly as you can. In a best of three series, you're lucky to get two games in. You need to make that game three happen as fast as you possibly can. Just take the loss, scoop it up, go to game two, and try your best from there. If you can't win in game two, well, at least you got that far. That's the important thing. So never linger on a game when you know you have no shot of winning. If your opponent has overwhelmed you early and you just sit here and go, I can't keep up, just scoop it up. That's my best advice. And I feel like I probably should have done that in about two of my games. Otherwise, I would not have gone four, three, and two. I can tell you right now, two of the games I lost, I lost for a reason. This deck cannot stand up to Galissapod, and it cannot stand up to a deck like Drampa Garb. Too many items. We're talking 38 items in this deck, I think. I want to say it's 38. Uh, it's either 34 or 38. I'm not going to go through the count right now. But Garb destroys it. Galissapod can't win it destroys. It just I had no shot. So those are two that I genuinely say I should have lost and I did lose. I lost against one Darkrai because they needed three energy in a muscle band or four energy in one turn on turn two of time and he did it. Otherwise it would have been another tie and I would have been four, two, and three which would have been enough to get me top 256 points. Instead, I sit at 432, 297th place out of 816 masters and I did not get any points. But again, this was my first time with Expanded, playing a deck that really should not have done even that well. Truthfully speaking, I am pretty happy with it. Going forward, I understand Expanded a little bit better. I don't recommend this unless you wanna go for fun, but this deck is so much fun to play, guys. It really is. But you'll see that on Battle Frontier Friday when we go against N, whatever he decides to build, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I realize it's a lot to explain. It's a very long video, but hopefully you hung in there for the explanation of how to play the deck. And if you are interested in trying it out, you can now do so. This is about as optimal of a build as I really do recommend. I don't think anything needs to be changed. Um, just for my play style anyways, but you guys can take with it, take it, take it and do with it whatever you want to do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, subscribe for more TCG content, and we'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, I'm Professor K, you all take care, have a great day.